Hello YouTube, my name is Dakota and welcome to Bowtide Media where we've got another installment of This Week in EDM where you go over songs that, well, came out this week in EDM. Uh, there are 30 of them that I wanted to talk about from a wide range of things. There's songs I thought were not great and some songs I thought were some pretty standout tracks this week. And uh, as always, there is a Spotify link down below uh, for that if that is your uh, chosen platform for listening to music. Uh, you find all 30 songs there. But let's start off in the bad category songs that I thought are bad. Remember, these are just my opinions. Uh, we've got Vice Stone, You Miss Me. Uh, Tropical House Vice Down sounds so much like 2016 Project 46 to me, and uh, it's pretty chill, but just absolutely boring personally. So uh, that's why it's here and bad. Then we're moving on to Spectre 2.0 with Alan Walker, Steve Aoki, and Lonely Club. The Walker World LP is out now, and uh, in this track in particular, Spectre 2.0, uh, I'm honestly shocked that uh, he manages Alan Walker, particularly manages to remix his own stuff and still make it sound like every song he's ever made. Like, he remixes his own song, and it still sounds the same. I don't get it. Even with Steve Aoki and Lonely Club here, there's really no difference between this and a kind of boring Alan Walker track to me. Vocals are dry and weak on this, and I I don't think the halftime drop is it. So uh, that's that. And we're moving into Dylan Francis and Martin Horgan with On a Trip. The new uh, mixtape is coming out by Dylan Francis soon. Not quite yet, but uh, this track is honestly just uh, just boring. Uh, similar to the Vice Tone one, uh, it's kind of just like this derivative house beat. It's just basic freaking house, and I uh, don't love it as much, so... Then we're moving to Barely Alive featuring Mikey Caesar with Headshot. I really was not vibe into this track in particular. I've listened to a lot of Mikey Caesar in the past and it uh, kind of feels like he phoned it in on this one. Uh, and the processing on the vocals also really wasn't it, I don't think. Uh, it wasn't really clean. Uh, the transition between the movements also were a little abrupt for me on the production side. It just felt like a really messy track, all things considered. And so I was not feeling this one, sadly. And up next, we've got Sudden Death and Murata with Peanut Butter. And uh, there's a certain review uh, online that I saw about the song that I think in perfectly encapsulates this track for me. And so I'm just going to read that. So this is a review from Open Doors on Album of the Year. And they say, I can't tell if this goes ridiculously hard or if it's just really fucking loud. I think that's a perfect way to talk about the track, although I will I will put in bad personally. But uh, we'll move into the meh category now, songs that I thought were pretty meh. Uh, we've got Hardwell Afrojack featuring Meryl with Push It. Um, even though Big Room is kind of dead these days in the industry right now, I didn't really think this was too bad, more or less standard, but uh, kind of played around with the melody at the end of each drop, which I thought was a nice little change up and it was a little bit more playful than I normally heard. But other than that, I thought it was a pretty standard, uh, not for me track. So, and then sadly, we've got Pegboard Nerds with Zenith. Um, haven't really been all in for the Pegboard Nerd releases as of late, uh, their last bunch of tracks, and I think their sound has just become a little bit stale. I think the song is a great example of that. Uh, they use the kind of same melody structure, synth sounds, and um, yeah, overall, it just seems like they need a bit of a mix up. Uh, there's really nothing changing from track to track they've been putting out in the last little bit. And uh, yeah, um, it's also really not super polished. It just sounds like they kind of phoned it in on this personally. Um, yeah, not a huge fan of Zenith. Sorry, Pigboard Nerds, but. And then we got Cyclops with Dungeon Core. The new Tear Jerker EP is out now. And uh, wow, Cyclops is really embracing the minimalistic dubstep here uh, with the drops in particular of this track uh, being. Just like, uh, huh, huh. Huh, just like super minimal dubstep, very little to it um, in in terms of complexity. And so some people really, really like that and some people don't. Um, and this will pretty much live and die by your prior feelings of that specific sound of dubstep. If you love that kind of sound, you will love this. If not, uh, you won't. And personally, I didn't really mind it, but I don't really see myself returning to it anytime soon. Then we've got Subtronics with Omnidirectional, uh, pretty out there explosive rhythm track with a more standard dubstep finale, uh, but as its name implies, uh, it's definitely a little bit more all over the place in a bunch of different directions, kind of going here and there, and uh, in the end, I just uh, thought it was meh. And I've got Slander featuring Rory and Dylan Matthew with Walk on Water, the Wooly and Trivecta remix. I didn't love the original so much, and so this remix didn't really resonate with me as well there, so take that with a grain of salt. Uh, I thought the heavy-hitting first uh, drop was pretty weak, and probably the Wooly drop of this track, um, while the kind of standard more uh, mellow dub finale, and I'm assuming the Trivecta drop, um, was uh, standard to me. So, yeah, not a huge fan. Then we've got Inhuman and Profit, sorry, Inhuman's Profit track. Uh, yeah, heavy hitting dubstep from Inhuman here. It's a more of the same that I've heard from him from the last little bit. And so uh, I just think it's meh for me personally. I would love a little bit more of a change up. 
They've got Keys and Crates featuring Kiera with Fantasy. The Intention album is out now from Keys and Crates. Um, this is a simple and vibey deep house track with a groove and beat. Um, this whole album is pretty much just like good vibes only, like that slogan just in an album. And uh, yeah, despite its simplicity, I think it's a pretty okay track. And yeah. They've got Good Boys and Fast Boy with a Deep End. Uh, this track has a kind of mad switch up that really caught me off guard, prefacing as a kind of basic slap house track and then transforming into something of a bit of like a speed house, borderline drum and bass track. And um, I sort of liked it. I thought it was pretty fun. I just don't know if it was really as executed as cleanly as I'd wanted it to be. Uh, but I did think the concept was uh, quite intriguing. So um, yeah, big plus for that. Then we've got Don Diablo and Scrafizer with Got That. Uh, fairly standard bass house here from Don Diablo. And um, yeah, didn't love the vocals, but the thought the song was just kind of aggressively mid is the best way I could put it. Um, and that's why it's in the math category. I've got Eula and Shay with Always No, another simple kind of ambient house uh, track here cut from Eula. Uh, didn't feel too crazy about this one way or another. He's definitely had a lot more stronger uh, stylistic tracks in the past, um, but this is a just a, yeah, solid just to put it on and vibe to and chill, so... Then we've got Bensley and uh, Denmo with Interference. Um, very bizarre track. Uh, the melody is simultaneously um, bad and really intriguing. And also I loved it. And also it was the worst thing I've heard. Um, yeah, I'll definitely give it credit for being unique, um, especially considering how long that first drop is. And that's very not normal for uh, the music scene now today. But uh, yeah, in the end, I think it was just okay. Uh, there's a lot going on in my brain when I listen to this song. Uh, a lot that I loved and a lot that I didn't. But Then we've got Kid starting, start, starting from scratch. Uh, the new Past Life EP on Ophelia is out now. And uh, there are some intriguing movements here in Sonic Elements, but uh, for a Kid track, I feel like the mixing was quite flat. Actually, I kind of feel like Kid is known for their dynamicism in their mixing and mastering, but um, I don't know. This one also kind of fell into some of the more commercial tropes as of late. Uh, and yeah, so I just thought it was meh. Then we've got Skylar with Close Your Eyes. Uh, I feel like this is just standard hybrid trap from Skylar here. Uh, it's not a bad sound, but definitely uh, something I've heard a ton from her as of late. And so uh, it is just in meh. Then we've got Duskus with Cut. The Healers Volume 1 EP is out now. And this is another like great ethereal garage track with vibey synth licks and simple tonal movements. Um, but it's just a bit short. And uh, in the grand scheme of things, it sounds a lot like every other track on this EP. And so uh, I just have it here in meh. Then we're moving into the good category songs that I thought were pretty good this week. We've got Enema and Agri featuring Mangus, uh, or Mangus with Higher Power. Uh, one of Enema's best, I'd say. Uh, dark progressive house with a good supporting vocal and uh, melody that doesn't really put me to sleep. Uh, I feel like um, it's a mix of nostalgia and the big room sound that I felt like uh, hasn't really been in the industry a lot late, which I talked about earlier, but I think this has done a lot better in this sense. And so I think Enema is one of the really... Only people doing this kind of big room sound of sorts, even though it's Progressive House as of late, and uh, I think this one's not too bad. Then we've got Apache and Joffrey with Lost in Mumbai. Uh, not his most explosive track to date. We've got a new LP coming out soon by Apache. But um, yeah, kind of more of the same dubstep orchestral fusion that we've kind of come to know and love from Apache. This is just a uh, solid run-of-the-mill Apache track, but a solid run-of-the-mill Apache track is a good track any other day of the week, so... Uh, yeah, and then we got Blank and Casey Cook with tr Crashing Hard, a uh, first single from an upcoming Monster Cat EP from Blank, and uh, this is more his of melodic side, and I think it's one of his better ones of melodic stuff. I haven't really enjoyed his melodic takes as of late, but uh, this one I quite enjoyed. Uh, Casey Cook's vocals um, are strong, despite falling into some kind of melodic dub uh, tropes in terms of narrative and where you're going and just kind of the basic relationship stuff that Mellow Dub tends to talk about, but uh, I didn't think it was too bad, so I'm a big fan of that. I got Mord Fustang with Fool's Paradise. The Red Data EP is out now. And uh, yeah, Mord Fustang is practically like MIDI soloing his whole way through this track with one of the longest extended like drop sections of a song I have heard um, in a long time. I said that earlier about another song, but this one, it just kind of blows someone out of the water. Just kind of, it just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. Uh, and in that sense, it's not really the drop. It just is the song. Um, but uh, yeah, it's pretty much just one long solo jam session. And I uh, liked it. 
Then we got Mackie G with Fang. Uh, this is like dance floor meets uh, like melodic fusion of drum and bass of a track, and um, I enjoyed it. Uh, the melody simultaneously has like a heavy synth punch to it, while also keeping that melodic rhythm that I mentioned ever uh, previously. But uh, yeah, it was a unique sound that I hadn't heard a whole ton of in the drum and bass scene, and uh, I, I enjoyed it. Then we've got Dua Lipa with Houdini. Uh, the new big summer blockbuster of 2024 is here with Houdini. And uh, yeah, you're going to be hearing this a lot on the radio, a lot in 2024. And um, you might as well get used to it now because it is a solid track. It's a little bit more of an airy tone that we didn't really get from the last couple Dua Lipa projects um, until that kind of last finale with that epic guitar rift. And uh, yeah, I just thought it was um, a solid, solid track. And I'm glad to hear this uh, will be on radio soon uh, in the airwaves. Then we got Drinks on Me and Cloud Nun with Too Late, a surprise kind of throwback track for me, which is a little bit more of a liquid dubstep garage sound and uh, is is very kind of just like, it's just got a, a, a long presence of a track, just kind of whoa, just there. Um, it's not quite the kind of fast paced tempo that I expected from a Drinks on Me and Cloud Nun collab as of today, but uh, one that I think worked really, really well and uh, I enjoyed that track. Now we got the Elohim remix of Owl Nation's Candy Pop. Uh, a new actually EP from Owl Nation just came out called Candy Pop. And uh, I actually wanted to talk about Elohim's remix of this rather than the original because I thought the original was uh, not good. And I thought this remix was uh, really good, actually. I think it's one of Elohim's uh, best in a long time. Uh, it's like, uh, it's fairly heavy winded and uh, like kind of strictly bass remix, but it's got great tonal movements. I think the mixing is exquisite. I just really, really like this track. Um, I would say, <laughs> don't listen to the original, go listen to the Elohim remix. Then we've got Chase and Status featuring uh, Stefan Dawn with Selecta. Uh, the Too Rough Volume 1 mixtape is out now, and I have been playing this thing nonstop all weekend. Personally, I freaking love this thing. I'm a huge fan of Chase and Status as of right now. And um, yeah, uh, despite being around the game for more than two decades, this mixtape really feels like a turning point for Chase and Status' uh, career of sorts. Um, this record has like changed the musical landscape of UK drum and bass and kind of the kind of hybrid crime. And uh, yeah, this track particularly is kind of all of what encompasses and what makes the record special and unique. Um, incredible mixing and ever-present beat, uh, the UK rap vocals thrown over top of the whole thing. Um, this individual track isn't my favorite. Uh, it almost made it to stand out, uh, but there are a lot of really, really good tracks from this uh, mixtape. So go listen to uh, Chasing Status now. And then we're moving into the standout category. We've got two songs in standout this week. Two songs I really, really, really enjoyed. I thought they were cut above the rest. Uh, we're starting with Hello World, Need That. In an already great year for Hello World, this might be one of my favorites from him yet. Uh, you've got kind of all the stylings and uh, like solid production of a kind of basic, more standard Hello World track, but just with like this jitter bass drop that I hadn't really heard from him and really or really embrace, I think, as much as he has on this track. Um, I think it matches the tone of it perfectly with the lyrics. Um, yeah, catchy melody and simple lyrics make this an instant earworm, and I think this is a absolutely wonderful track. And my, uh, in my opinion, the best song of the week, another standout track, uh, is Fool uh, with Machine. The Machine LP is out now, but this track, the first track of the LP Machine, uh, is a phenomenal intro to the record. Um, it's like a dubstep, mid-tempo, synthwave fusion of a track, uh, and it is like, um, oh man, it's just destructive, and it has this just prowess. It has this energy and girth to it that I uh, is just is just brilliant, I would say. Uh, my only gripe is that it's just a little too short. I wanted more of it. I would have loved a third element. I would have loved to see him just really go hard at it. But um, I still think the song is phenomenal. So, uh, but yeah, let me know what you think of any and all in the, of these songs in the comment section below. But other than that, uh, I'm Dakota from Brotide Media, and I will see you guys in another video.